Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on Dynamic Programming by IntelliPad. Dynamic Programming is a technique in computer programming that helps to efficiently solve a class of problems that have overlapping sub-problems and optimal substructure property. In this session, you will learn all about Dynamic Programming. So without further wait, let's start the session. But before we begin the session, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you'll never miss any update from us. Hello everyone and welcome to IntelliPad. In this video, I'll be introducing the concept of dynamic programming. So this will be a complete hands-on video. Firstly, I'll be uh, defining what a dynamic programming is and uh, its definition, its concepts uh, br very briefly. And next I'll move on to an example explaining dynamic programming, how to uh, follow this technique of dynamic programming. And uh, finally, I will be concluding this video by giving away few takeaways uh, from the example. So the example example I'll be using in this uh, hands-on section will be Fibonacci series. The reason why I chose Fibonacci series uh, or Fibonacci numbers is because all of you guys are already familiar with uh, it because it is a very uh, famous example uh, in programming and it is uh, very easy to understand so that I don't uh, waste time in explaining the logic of a very complex example and that will be counterintuitive for me to explain dynamic programming so hence I have chosen a very easy example that is Fibonacci series now that we are clear with the agenda let us move on with the video now firstly before uh, coding uh, the Fibonacci series and explaining how to optimize it using dynamic programming method let me define what dynamic programming is. So even before that, um, I have to define what optimization problems are. So let us see what they are. An optimization problem is a computational problem in which objective is to find the best of all possible solutions. That is for a given uh, problem, let's say Fibonacci series in this case. So there will be a number of examples. There can be n number of solutions and all the solutions are correct. But you need to find the best of the possible, all the possible solutions and that is optimization problem. And more formally if we want to define what a dynamic programming is uh, so find a solution in a feasible region that has the minimum or maximum value of the objective function so feasible region here means that um, uh, it is an imaginary region uh, wherein all the possible solutions are present so within that uh, possible solutions you need to find the minimum or maximum value of the objective function that is you need to find the least or the maximum of the objective function now if you get confused uh, with the definition do not worry so it will be more clear when I solve the problem of Fibonacci series and explain what dynamic programming is. And uh, there are two ways to solve an optimization problem. Firstly, we have a uh, greedy method. Okay, before that, we have two ways to solve uh, optimization problems. Uh, the first method is uh, greedy method. And the second method is dynamic programming. So these two methods come under optimization problem. Uh, these two methods are uh, the ways to solve uh, an optimization problem. So the center of this video will be dynamic programming only. Greedy method, you can look it up on Google or uh, go to our YouTube channel to find uh, tutorials on greedy method. So in greedy method, we already know the predefined procedure. That is, we already know how to find the result and uh, we follow that predefined uh, method. So the examples of greedy method will be Krishkal's method for mind finding a minimum cost spanning tree and Registras algorithm for uh, finding the shortest path. These two, Krishkal's algorithm and uh, Dijkstra's uh, algorithm are the two examples for greedy method. In dynamic programming, we will have to find all the possible solutions to a given optimization problem and then pick the best solution from that. So this method is, will be very time consuming as we have to consider all feasible solutions to a particular problem. And mostly dynamic programming uh, methods uh, use a recursive formula so in uh, the example I'll be giving uh, that is Fibonacci series uh, in Fibonacci series also I will be using the recursive formulas to find the solution and this method uses the principle of optimality to solve the problem now let us see what the principle of optimality is the principle of optimality says that a problem can be solved using a series of decisions that are taken while programming the solution that will eventually lead to the best possible solution so principle of optimality says in other words uh, in 
simple words so basically what it says is you start programming a solution to a problem in this case fibonacci series and you follow a set of decisions that is uh, you follow a set of rules and after following this set of rules you will eventually uh, find the best solution so uh, find uh, getting to know this uh, set of rules is the task in dynamic programming so getting to know this set of rules is will take time and uh, practice uh, you can only know that by uh, coding uh, many problems like uh, starting off with the fibonacci series and solving many other problems let's say 50 to 100 problems in dynamic programming if you do that uh, then you will be very confident and comfortable in solving dynamic programming problems now without uh, any further ado let me go on to explain uh, the fibonacci numbers and how to solve it using dynamic programming so if you guys uh, forgot about fibonacci series i will be uh, revising what fibonacci series is basically it starts with zero and the next digit will be one and the next digit is one uh, two three followed by five eight thirteen 21. So let me explain what the pattern is here. Keep aside the first two uh, digits that is 0 and 1. So 0 and 1 are the first two digits in Fibonacci series. And from the uh, second digit, uh, you need to find a recurrence relation. So the recurrence relation is uh, given in by the formula in this statement. That is the uh, nth digit will be the sum of the previous two digits. That is f of n uh, will be is equal to f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. So let's take 8 here. Uh, 8 will be a digit in the Fibonacci series. So how to calculate 8? So we can calculate 8 by adding 5 and 3. And so that is what this recurrence relation says. And it continues for uh, infinity. Uh, so 21 here, we get it by using this formula. And this formula basically says us to add 13 and 8. That is the previous digit and the previous to previous digit. If you add it, you can get 21. Now let us code it in Python. So and one more thing guys, uh, here I'll be using Python programming language since most of us are comfortable in Python. And the code editor I'm using is Visual Studio. You can use whatever code editor or IDE you are comfortable with. So I'm defining a function called Fibonacci and it takes in one argument that is n. That is the term or the, the number in the series. Let's say if you pass in 7 here as I have passed in 7 here. So it will return me the 7th digit in the series. Let's see what the 7 digit in the series is. So this would be my 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th. So my 7th will be 8. Or if you start counting from 1, so my 7th digit will be 13. Now let us uh, see the logic behind it. Firstly, we'll be defining the function uh, n, a uh, function called Fibonacci of n. And this is an, this is recursion, uh, iterative recursion procedure. And we will, firstly, we will check the error case. That is, you cannot pass uh, negative uh, numbers because there is no negative term in Fibonacci series. You cannot find uh, the minus 1 term in Fibonacci series. It starts from 0 or 1. So you need to take care of that situation. So basically this statement that is in if n is less than 0, you have to print incorrect input. So this statement takes care of that case. And next you need to take care of the two base cases. That is uh, the first digit will always be 0 and the second digit will always be 1. So you need to take care of these base cases by putting an LF condition, two LF conditions respectively. Firstly, you are doing it for 0. If it is uh, the 0 term, you will be returning 0. And if it's the first term, you will be returning 1. So after the error and base cases are taken care of, you will put the recurrence relation in the final else part. So if it does not come under any of these conditions, so you will be calculating the uh, Fibonacci term uh, that is n minus 1 plus n minus 2 uh, and you'll be returning it uh, to the function and here I've used a print statement to print the result of this function. Now let me save this code and uh, run it to see what the result is. Alright, the result is 13 as we expected. Now, let me explain why uh, we need dynamic programming in this ca uh, case of Fibonacci series. Now, um, you guys can say that this program is working fine. Uh, why do we need uh, dynamic programming? 
but let let me explain why we need dynamic programming let's uh, in the case of uh, fibonacci of 7 that is the seventh term we need the seventh term so we have passed the seven seven as the argument in case we need higher numbers let's say 35 i need the 35th term in the fibonacci series uh, let us see what it happens what happens to the compiler when i save it and run it so as you can see the result is not instant i am still waiting for the result and now it has come it has given me the result so it took a minimum of uh, more than 5 seconds to uh, compute my result this is because uh, this piece of code is not optimized well so it it has a uh, time complexity more time complexity so in this case it has uh, n minus 1 n minus let let me take this as n minus 1 uh, only so n minus 1 plus n minus 1 t of n minus 1 plus uh, n minus 1 will be a uh, big o of n square which is uh, of exponential uh, time complexity so as the fib as my n increases here uh, the more exponential time it takes to compute my result so i have to get rid of this uh, time complexity so let me tell you a way how to do it and uh, before that guys uh, let me explain uh, the function call uh, trace here all right uh, this is the function call trace of the function fib or fibonacci uh, so i have uh, given the argument 7 so first uh, 7 will be called and then n is equal to 7 right so next uh, it will go inside the uh, else part and it will call n minus 1 and n minus 2 n minus 1 is 6 uh, and n minus 2 is 5 so it will again call f of uh, 6 and f of 5 so after it it has called 6 again it will call 5 and 4 that is n minus 1 and n minus 2 and coming to this one it will again uh, call it recursively by calling n of uh, i mean fib of 4 and fib of 3 and coming to this node here so where was i uh, okay let me take this uh function call for example this is fib of 5 fib of 5 will in turn call uh, fib of 4 and fib of 3 and fib of 4 will in turn call 3 and 2 so and it goes on until the end of the tree so let me count how many function call uh, fib of 7 has called so first function call will be here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 and 25 so fib of 7 has called the function 25 times so this is why our program uh, took a long time to give out the result for uh, f of 35 so the tree function call tree or trace for f of 7 is this big and imagine what the function call trace will be for f of 35 so it will be a very big tree that we can't even imagine so that is why it is taking a long time now let us see how to optimize at this uh, fibonacci series problem all right guys we can optimize this uh, fibonacci series problem by using dynamic method and within dynamic method there is a method called memoization basically you create a memo or uh, in this case an array memo is called an array so basically memo is uh, you keep track of uh, whatever you have got the result of that is let's say you have uh, already got the result of f of 1 or f of 2 let's say and you basically store it uh, instead of calling the function again you store it and you check if uh, it is stored in the array so if it is stored you use that instead of calling the function again so So let us see how to implement that. First, you will be declaring an uh, array called or a list here, uh, a list called fib array, and it will be equal to zero one. This is our base case because the first uh, number or the first digit in the fib Fibonacci series is zero, and the second number is one. So the base case is taken care of here. And next, I'll be defining the function uh, Fibonacci, and there'll be one parameter, of course, which is n. And here I'll be giving out three conditions that this is the error case. If it is less than or equal to zero, I'll be printing out incorrect output. And and in the second um, conditional statement that is elif i'll be checking if n is less than or equal to length of fib array and if it is uh, equal less than or equal if it is true basically i'll be returning fib array n minus 1 that is i'll be returning the previous term and in the last uh, condition i will be uh, putting out the formula that is i'll be declaring another uh, list called temp of fib temp underscore fib and here i'll be storing the value of the next uh, fibonacci series that is the nth fibonacci series let's say i pass in 7 so this will be fibonacci of 6 and fibonacci of 5 and the result will be stored in uh, 
temp of fib and in the array i will be appending the temp fib that is let, let's say it calculates so the third we already have the first digit second digit or uh, let's say this uh, statement uh, calculates the third digit and the third digit is uh, 1 plus 0 which is 1 and uh, it is stored in temp fib and uh, I will be appending that 1 to this uh, list here so it will look something like this and if it goes through iterates it once again so it will be 1 plus 1 will be 2 so this will be in the array trace but I won't be doing that here and finally I'll be returning temp or uh, temp fib because I want to print it out in the console here now let us see in the normal method before I applied the dynamic programming concept to it in the normal method if i called uh, the fibonacci uh, function of 35 it took me more than five seconds to calculate the result because the time complexity was o of n square which was exponential now if we do uh, it here that is if we call a fibonacci of 36 uh, let us see what happens now i can't call 35 here uh, because it me gives me the previous result so here in this function 35 is equal to 36 i should have put n minus one here so you can do that using the print statement or uh, adding an extra print statement here but remember uh, fibonacci of uh, i am calling fibonacci of 35 here so it took f more than five seconds here in the normal method and if after applying the dynamic method uh, specifically memoization method let us see how long it takes so if i just save the program and run it it gives me the result instantly because the time complexity is reduced because i'm storing the values here and it basically uh, let me uh, explain how the time complexity reduces here all right uh, before we saw in the normal uh, method for solving fibonacci series we had to call the function basically 25 times and the time complexity was in o of n square which is exponential and that why that is why it took us more than five seconds to get the result of f fib of uh, uh, 35 so after uh, s optimizing the solution for fibonacci series uh, let us see how the function call uh, trace will be so first uh, all right guys let us now see how the function call trace works for our uh, second uh, case that is uh, the dynamic programming solution for our fibonacci series problem so firstly we have let's say we call in uh, fib of 7 uh, and it calls uh, fib of 6 and fib of 5 and it, the tree uh, goes like this and we have solved uh, this one here oh this is one one two this is one this is one this is one this is two and fibonacci of four is three and uh, this is five so we know that the fifth term is five uh, and uh, let's say the call stack is here it goes to f of five so it will already store the result of five here in the array so it stores the result of uh, 5 to be 5 here and it won't go call this functions again so once you have calculated the fib of 5 it will store it in a memo or an array that we created that is which is fib array in the second case fib arr this is this will be our list and here uh, the base case is uh, 0 and 1 uh, the base case is 0 and uh, 1 and here you have your uh, third term as 1 and this will be 2 and uh, so on so there are uh, more elements with between here and let's say you have already calculated uh, 5 f of 5 so it will be stored in the uh, list so you there is no need of calling 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 functions again so once you have calculated 5 you can skip this part so that is why the time complexity will be reduced and uh, you already have the result of 4 from here that is you already calculated 4 and you have stored the result in the array right here and so uh, if the function call comes to this point so there is no need of calling these functions below that so the result is already stored and it will return the result uh, from the array or the list here in case of python so this is basically the idea of dynamic programming and that is why we are able to save time uh, while calculating f of uh, 36 all right guys now let us see what the takeaway is for this video within dynamic programming we have two more methods or two methods uh, in this case that is memoization and tabulation memoization uses a top-down approach and tabulation uses a bottom-up approach so here in this case uh, i have used the memoization method by using fib array which is basically a memo 
and it is a top down approach to solve uh, the dynamic programming optimally we can say that uh, there is also one more method that is tabulation and you can look up that method as well uh, yeah, that is an alternative method to solve the, this fibonacci series uh, optimally in the end we can say that uh, the goal of dynamic programming is to reduce the time and space complexity of a solution to a problem as much as possible that's it from my side guys so uh, thank you for watching till the end have a nice day just a quick info guys if you want to make a career in software engineering then intellipad provides an advanced certification program on software engineering and application development by enict council of iit guwahati and it is taught by iit guwahati professors and industry experts this course is designed to upskill and land your dream job